on or getting ready to happen, so please be prepared. William Mount and Channel 77 in Seattle. People asked me why Walmarts are closing. The answer is simple. When I took an Army logistics class, we developed, the U.S. Army developed the logistics system for Walmart. Walmarts were strategically set up around the world to act as military distribution bases. So if we have problems in Yemen, the Special Forces takes over the Walmart in Yemen, you can order a helicopter and nuclear weapons on the Walmart logistics system. There's a back door into it. They taught me that. If you are going to have Operation Jade Helm throughout the Southwest, you seize a Walmart. You can order things such as M16 rounds. You can order an M16 to the Walmart program. So they walk into a Walmart, fire 2,200 people in California. You're all laid off. Go away. No unemployment. Get out of here. Because the military then takes over their base. The specific logistics program I was trained on in California it's the same program they use at Walmart. The Walmarts are federal military posts. All how many Walmarts they have, they get extra money from the government. And when the government takes over, they get a fortune from the government. Those products are redistributed to other Walmarts. In addition, the American dollar is no longer being accepted in a lot of countries. Walmart can't get products. Nobody will exchange the American dollar for the toys that we're getting at Walmart. Sorry, it's the way it is. The end game is here. Folks, if you get laid off from Walmart and Home Depot, they're federal, they're, they're similar to colleges that are federal repositories like Humboldt State University where they have underground... Shalom. Call Halimla, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Kakadash. Double honors to the elders of Apostle Great Millstone who rule will teach well. And to the brothers that's tuning in, women, men, women, and children that's tuning into this truth, and the brothers that's pushing this truth, shalom. Now, you heard the man break down how these Walmarts and other facilities are strategically placed across uh, Babylon the Great because Esau is getting ready to roll on you Israelites. Esau, these Edomites, which is indeed so-called white people, which self-proclaimed themselves themselves as white in the um, late 17th century. Before then, and I think it was Richmond or somewhere, some something like that in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, I believe. They um, signed it into law of you know white. Before then, they were calling themselves whatever Dutch. And so on and so forth. But Esau had to set up in law to to s appear like he's superior than the Israelites when clearly they're not. But what Esau has done now is Esau has has mastered and molded his his sword on the left hand. He, he's, he's pretty much perfected that sword to come after you, you, you tribes. And that's and that's um. That's the that's really the wrath of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, that he's using Esau Edom to take out on you two thirds. That's finna come down the the pipe. Let's let's go into the scriptures for that. <laughs> Psalm seventeen and thirteen. Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him. Cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the wicked, which are you Edomites, is the sword of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Shai. And just to prove that the Edomites are the wicked, Psalm Malachi 1 and uh, verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return. And built the desolate places. Thus said Yahweh of hosts. They shall build but I will throw down. And they shall call them. The border of wickedness. And the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. So these Edomites. Are getting ready to roll on your tribes. Now I've seen. Plenty plenty of videos. Of Walmart workers. Um, going into all the shady stuff. That's at Walmart. Like there's one video I've seen. 
He said they had like a underground, like the Walmart had an underground like part to it that that they didn't really touch up on. These Walmarts will indeed be turned into FEMA camps. You see, um, they even had that in The Simpsons, I believe, where they turned a Walmart or, 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 or something, whatever, grocery stores in The Simpsons, they turned it to a FEMA camp. You tribes, you, you two thirds of so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, some of y'all just going to run to the FEMA. But you see these heathens going to get caught up, too. But these Edomites mainly want you tribes. But what I've been seeing when you when you see certain people that have this type of information, but they don't they're not, you know, Israelites or calling on the name. How about Shimei al Shah? They think that. Esau is trying to roll on the on, on people who believe in uh, Christianity, man, and that's 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 BS. You understand? They say that they say that uh, Christians are gonna uh, be be persecuted because they believe in in fucking Jesus Christ, man. That's that's total bullshit. Because Yahweh Bashimi Al Shah, which is the proper names, has only been for the Israelites and uh, the Christians. Were um all Israelites. There was no heathen being called a, a Christian because the Christians, all a Christian means is uh, let's just get it. All a Christian means is a follower of Yahweh Shai because Christian Christ it means Hamashiach, which means um that that that's not what it means. That's the proper way of saying it in the, the Paleo Hebrew tongue, which just means ancient Hebrew. And it means the the anointed, and then it just means the follower of what the anointed. And uh, when you go into the word, it just means a follower of the anointed. Now, as we know, Christianity didn't come into the planet Earth until what was it, uh, the Roman Emperor Constantine. Something like that. Probably pronouncing his name wrong, but it's something like Constantine. And uh, what was it? 325 AD. So that was what? Four, five hundred years after the, the Yahweh Shah died. All right. So Christianity, Yahweh Shah did not promote Christianity. You understand? There was, there was no there is no people under the doctrine of Christianity up until like fully persuaded you understand being called christianity up until um 325 ad but before then you had edomites having um ea seuss you understand um it was another one i forgot his name but uh i think it was like ea seuss and then when you translate ea seuss to english with the letter j that's how you get jesus but it's um it's more to it but anyways Esau is getting ready to come down on you tribes. I seen another video where it was like some type of it was like a gas chamber, man, or something, something like that, man. It was like a gas chamber, a, a literal, 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 you understand, literal gas chamber in a Walmart, in a Walmart, man. Esau, Esau is coming for you tribes. You see, when when all hell you see when all hell break loose and the internet off and is every man for himself, these Edomites are coming straight for you, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They coming straight for you. As soon as the power's off, they coming for you, man. They are coming for your ass, man. The the higher level Edomites. These low level Edomites, these middle tier Edom all these Edomites is coming for you. Because that's that's um the judgment of Yahweh Bashimi Al Shah who. But now the elites, mainly the elites of these Edomites, these Israelis, these small hatters, they want they want to get the elect because they know who's um who's an Israelite or not like they know not not necessarily that. How should I word it a little bit better? They know who knows that they are the Israelites. You understand these these two thirds out here don't know they're Israelites, but they are Israelites. So they're, they're they're Gentiles, Gentile state of mind. But the Israelites that know that they're Israelites and and also calling on name Yahweh Shimei Al Shai, that's the main ones 
that these elites want these these what you call these global bankers you understand they had these these private militaries getting getting ready to round you up but thing about these FEMA camps is a hundred percent I'm a hundred percent positive you know once all hell break loose you're gonna have some people specifically Jake you're gonna have some Jake especially these women they gonna willingly go to the FEMA camps because they're just gonna be so scared because it's gonna be complete lawlessness like people just gonna be roaming around ganged up doing whatever the fuck they want you know breaking into stores taking everything out the stores once there's no more stuff to take out the stores they're gonna hit up the neighbor's house and once there's no more to take from the neighbor's house they're gonna branch out to other areas and then mo some of them just gonna turn straight cannibal you know i was talking i was talking to this dude really two dudes this is the first dude he was like kind of kind of sort of joking about it but I asked him, I'm like, yo, like you, you really, you, would you really like eat human flesh? And he's like, yeah. And it's like, and some people are sick, man. Some, some people are, are sick. Cause I mean, he's, he could be joking, but he, he, he has plans, like not last minute. You got nothing else to eat. No, he has literal plans to eat human flesh. You under do you understand what I'm saying? And this other guy asked him like, "All right, man, he lives in he lives in Nebraska." This other guy I'm talking about, he's he's in um I'm not gonna say where he's at, but the other guy I'm talking to about it, he's like up in Nebraska or whatever. And I'm asking like, you know, ne Nebraska's pretty desolate, you know. There's none but but uh flatlands and you understand. So I'm asking him like, yo, like. If you put in a position where, <clears throat> you know, it's the apocalypse or whatever, right? Society's done with. There's no more grocery store, no more Pizza Hut, right? And I'm asking him, like, yo, what would you what would you eat? You know, like, would you eat human flesh? And he's like, yeah, yeah. If I if I had nothing else to eat but humans, I would eat human. So that goes to show you that cannibalism is coming, man. It's coming because, you know, when you starve, certain parts of your brain shuts down. You understand? Because like with your with your body, the brain is pretty much the most uh, important part of your body. Because if your brain's damaged, that means the rest of your body is damaged. You understand? You can become mentally disabled. You could lose, you know, you can lose certain other functions. You get what I'm saying? So your your body protects your brain at all costs. I mean, literally, it does. That's why in certain situations, you it, it instinctively cover your head. So when you start um, starving, your brain will literally make it make, shut off like certain parts of your body, uh, your brain that deals with um logic. So you can, you know, go out and become a cannibal. Literally, man, it's it's insane. And that's the judgment that's coming upon you. Um, you, you, you tribes and you, the rest of these heathens. Let's see if I can get some scriptures on this, this cannibalism, man. This is Jeremiah ninth the nineteenth chapter. And verse three and say Hear ye the word of Yahweh, O kings of Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus said Yahweh of hosts, the power of Israel, behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the hope that which whosoever heareth his ear shall tingle because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in it unto their gods whom neither they nor their fathers have known nor the kings of Judah and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. All right. And you, 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 you niggas out here is doing this yet again, being witches, 
warlocks killing your brother. You understand? Not calling name you how by Shimmy Shai. Being willfully ignorant. You you, you being uh, adulterers and adulteresses. You, you understand? You following after these idols. If it be a young boy get the, the get the crack scene, I'm gonna get the crack scene. That's how you wicked niggas think out. You understand? That's how destroyed our people are in this society. And that's why they're um undesirables. Let's scroll down to verse um verse seven. And I will make a and I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies, and by the hands of them that seek their lives, and their carcasses will I give to be meat for the fowls of heaven, and for the beasts of the earth. And I'll make this city desolate, and in hissing, everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and hiss because of all the plagues thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons, and the flesh of their daughters. And they shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend, in the siege of straightness, wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. So so cannibalism is coming back because these scriptures are twofold. They have many they can apply to very many different moments in the past, present and the future. And you in this coming collapse is going to be pretty much the greatest level of cannibalism this world will ever see because it's going to be the greatest level of evil you understand we're so we're so much weaker like and not so much in the sense of um this the brothers in this ministry but uh just these these humans out here are are weaker than what their their forefathers were Back even 50 years ago, let alone two, three hundred, just 50 years ago, testosterone and all will willpower and everything that connects to that has has it drastically decreased among men. So in a time coming, men, you, you see just you see when when dudes do evil it's not even. um. Is not even a a a a sign of high willpower, so to speak. Doing evil is actually quite easy, especially if you're following behind somebody. So when you when you go out here in in societies and in in, in shambles, people are going to be doing wickedness on every corner. It's going to be. You you gotta understand how are people gonna get food once the the food chain is done? Esau is finna get rid of cash. Esau finna release more plagues, which is just ultimately Yahweh by Shimei Al Shai working through Esau to do these things. But nonetheless, it's coming, and you 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 people out here are not prepared. You people think it's going. And I hear people saying the most BS statements, man. They'll say, oh, it's not going to happen. If it happened, I'm going to be 60, 70 years old with a bunker. Or or they'll make up another scenario. Oh, it is going to happen with my um great grandkids. I'm going to be dead. Bullshit, man. You made that up in your head. You literally made that up in your head. You use your feelings and opinions because you're scared. You're you're scared. You're weak. You're weak. That's all it is, man. These people out here are weak. The only people that are truly strong is the men that's calling on Naomi Al Bashimi Al Shah and the women, of course, too, and the children. But mainly starting with the men. That's the only win. Only people that have true power. These these people out here don't have true power. You think just because you got a a lot of money. Or um, all right, let's let's dive in a little bit into this red pill stuff, man. The red pill is just a watered down version of the truth. They they say in the red pill, you you you're not. They say that um, just because you you got big muscles, or you got a lot of money, or you got a lot of status, <sighs> that um, that um, 
doesn't make you alpha, which is true. None of that makes you alpha. But then the red pill, they'll say how you move, you know, pretty much your willpower, how you interact. That's what make you alpha. And that's also true. And the ultimate way to move is by knowing these scriptures, by knowing the name Yahweh Bashim Shai. So like I just said previously, the only people that have true strength are the Israelites that's calling on the name Yahweh Bashim Shai, starting with, with the men, starting with the prophets and the brothers that wholeheartedly believe in this truth. Everybody else, they're weak. They're going to fold, man. Now, yes, you will have, you know, certain groups that are, you know, have um, bunkers or however you want to look at it. But if they survive in those bunkers, that means they were being um, saved to be the first fruits of slavery in the kingdom. <clears throat> so regardless, they just they're weak because at the end of the day, everything comes that back to um, power, man. Everything is everything is about power. There's nothing that isn't about power. Yahweh Shai did what he did for what? Power. You understand? Doing the will of Yahweh by Shem Shai goes back to power. Of course, in our minds is about mercy, but that mercy translates to what? Power. You understand? Power. Saving Yahweh Shai saved the Israelites. He was the mediator for their second covenant. Power. The Elohim. It literally means powers. You understand? It all translates back. What what does Israel mean? Yasharala. What does Yasharala mean? He is a prince of power. So it all goes back to power. And these these people out here, they're powerless. They're powerless. Esau, Esau power on the left hand side. And it's going to be overcome by the right hand. You two thirds. There's not calling on Yahweh by Shemi Shah. You're powerless. Esau is going to slaughter you. You think you're going to have guns and have a gunfight with Esau? You may kill a few. You may even overpower these mid tier, low tier Edomites. But Esau, these top tier, man, they got robots shooting lasers, man. They got bullets that that'll that, that'll curve through. They'll be at they'll be at a, a a right they'll be at an obtuse angle, they won't even see you in your room, and they'll shoot a bullet that'll curve through the wall and hit your headshot, man, and you won't even see it coming. So these top tier Edomites, man, they got they got Terminators, and they they just gonna Jake, they, Jake is gonna be a prey. This is gonna be worse than um slavery, man. This is gonna be worse than slavery. It's gonna be worse than um. The siege when Esau, under the guise of Romans, sieged us in 70 AD. It's going to be worse than, worse than anything. It's going to be, let's go to Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, man. Let's go to Daniel 12 first. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same time, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And that's only one third of, of the Israelites that will um be delivered in this coming uh, great tribulation, man. Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great, great. So that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And only the, the one third, which are the elect, will be saved. You two thirds is going to get slaughtered by Esau and, and animals and, and, and newly created creatures. Uh, you're going to be committing suicide. It's going to be a, 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 a all out bloodbath on you two thirds. But the, and these heathens going to get it, too. Don't get it twisted. It's not like it's going to be a one sided death of the Israelites. It's, everybody's getting slaughtered out here. Let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. In uh, Matthew 24 and uh, 19, 
and war unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. That's right. Because it's going to be, this is pretty much going into the apocalypse, man. But these movies truly don't describe how gruesome and how much stuff is really going to go on. Because some things you just can't show on television, man. Like it was another, it was like a documentary. Uh, I think they called it, I don't know the proper way you call it, but it's like, when you have a documentary, but it's kind of like a movie type documentary. I forgot the proper term for it, but he was pretty much trying to describe how uh, Esau in a role on you Babylonians, specifically Jake. And uh, he got killed before the movie could could be fully in production or whatever, man, because they didn't want all that information coming out. They, they claimed it was a suicide, but. We all know that Esau, Esau has his ways. Verse 20, but pray ye, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Yeah, because it's, you know, in the winter is, is very cold. You would need extra, extra clothing to, to keep warm in the winter. And, you know, you can be stuck in five, six feet of snow, depending on where you're at. Neither on this, the Sabbath day, and because on the Sabbath you're supposed to be relaxing. You're not supposed to be moving around, you know. But there is situations where uh, I believe Shai was with some men. And it was like a, they had like, I think he gave them a scenario about their, their ass. Let's see. Let me just get it. I think it was about a donkey, man. In a ditch. Let's see if I can find it. Luke 14 and 5 and answered them saying, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fall in, into a pit? It will not straight away pull him out on the Sabbath day. You understand? Because um, you're not going to um, pretty much the, the, the summary of how Shah was trying to get across is that they're 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 um, keeping the law, statute commandments. A hundred percent is not what's going to save you. You understand what's going to save you is having faith in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, specifically Yahweh Shai for his sacrifice. You understand? But of course, all when it all comes together is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and uh, the the Rakhakadash is the angels. You understand? I gotta, I'm gonna have to do a lesson on that later this week. Anyways, let's get back to it. Verse 21: For then shall be great. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So th this this apocalypse is supposed to be longer than it um is going to be because it was any longer. Um, pretty much everybody on planet Earth would be eradicated because you Edomites are sore losers. You know how you have some people where they'll be like, oh, if I can't have it, nobody can have it. That's Esau, man. Esau will literally destroy the whole planet Earth if he, know, if he feels like he can't uh, control it for himself. Verse 23, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Hamashiach, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Hamashiachs. And false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, we've seen plenty of things with Esau being false prophets, his, his fake Jesus and Esau's miracles through, um, you know, his technology, his witchcraft, his sorcery. And then, of course, you how a shy will come back. And after after this um, apocalyptic scenario, this apocalypse, this this great tribulation, you how a shy is going to come back and get his get his elect, give them that second covenant, save them from the nukes, that eradication from the nukes. And then we're going to start rebuilding the planet Earth in, in righteousness. But you, 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 you niggas out here, man, you spiggers, 
you you two you, you undesirables are gonna get slaughtered. Yao Bashimi Al Shah is gonna slaughter you, man. He is going to put you in the dirt. You you're not gonna even be in the dirt. You're gonna be like dung, man. Let's get that. You're not going to even be put in the dirt. You're just going to be laying. You're just going to be a carcass. You're going to be a corpse on the ground for the animals to eat. Let's get it. Let's get um Jeremiah eight. And verse from the top, verse one, in that time said Yahweh, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. And they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the hosts of heaven whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered nor buried. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth and death shall be chosen rather than by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places where they have driven them, said the Howell Post. And that's mainly going to how Jake um, collapsed. And we we got put on the bottom, which happened, fully started uh, happening in the, um, in the 17th century. You understand? The 1600s, around that time is when we started falling. When we was, you know, reeling in Europe. And how to establishments in west the west coast of Africa. But let's get um in that these bones goes into um Revelations the eleventh chapter and um Ezekiel the thirty seventh chapter. Revelations eleven Ezekiel thirty seven. But um let's get some more. It's some it was another scripture I was looking for. Let's go to Jeremiah 16, verse, um, verse 4. They shall die of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. They shall be consumed by the sword and by famine in their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And there's another scripture about an uh, angel calling up the birds to um come feast on all these dead bodies that's finna happen. Um that's finna uh, be be created in this in this coming collapse in this world's war. Let's get um All right, Revelation is the 19th chapter, verse um, 17. I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, to all the fowls, you understand, saying to all the fowls. So all these birds that fly on a planet Earth are going to have a, a giant meal. You understand? Saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great power, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together and make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And that's, um... That's these heathens trying to um they're going they're going to like like what was that speech was it Ronald Reagan one of these Babylonian kings in the 20th century were saying that um if that aliens came to earth humanity would come together fight against the aliens 
that's he, he's pretty much pointing at Yahweh Shai. This that's what he's going into. He's he's just trying to water down what Revelation the nineteenth chapter saying. Yahweh Shai is not no goddamn alien, man. Yahweh Shai was here first. Yahweh Shai was here first. Because Yahweh Shai was Adam. You understand? Yahweh Shai was Adam. So Yahweh Shai was here first. Not no goddamn alien. But anyways, Yahweh Shai, when Yahweh Shai comes back, all these heathens are going to stop fighting each other in World War Three, And they're going to try to jump Yahweh Shai because they know how once Yahweh Shai comes, nobody, no heathens going to rule. And they're, they're, they're last, these heathens will rather have Esau ruling them than having the Israelites ruling them because they're, they're, they're heathens. They don't, they don't comprehend righteousness like the Israelites do. But I'm going to end this off right there. Shalom.